Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock. Today, for this video, I wanted to do something a little different. A lot of people have asked me to check out this artist. I'm already a huge fan of theirs, but I promised myself the next time that they drop a new song, I would do it here with you guys. And lo and behold, right as I'm trying to figure out a video for the Thing Standing series, blam, here they are with a new song. I want to listen to and talk about Ninja Sex Party's The Mystic Crystal. Ninja Sex Party has been a big part of my music listening and library for a long time now, like seven years. They always hold a special place in my heart. My brother introduced them to me when I was in college. I don't know, they just always remind me to keep following my passions and believe in my dreams and keep working hard. Uh, we saw their 10th anniversary show here in Chicago last October. That day really meant a lot to me. I'm just a huge fan of their work. I wanted to dedicate this video to uh, my brother and also to my sister. Uh, Ninja Sex Party is one of those things that all three of us just kind of have in common and nerd out about. I just want to say thank you to my brother Chris for introducing me to Ninja Sex Party and I'm sorry that I told a live stream that you had lice as a child. So yeah, this one's, uh, this one's for you. We're going to be checking out the Mystic Crystal. I keep wanting to call it the Magic Crystal or the Magical Crystal. Usually, as soon as I see a new song drops, I listen to it right away. I made myself wait for you guys, but I did find out that they want to do a music video on this song, but it would be really large. They're selling uh, super fan pins. Uh, the money goes towards making that project happen. So if you haven't and you want to, or if you want to support them and you don't know who they are, here's a link right here. I've already bought a couple. I just want this. Think of it as buying me a Christmas present if you really want to, because then I get a video that I want to, even if you don't know what I'm talking about. Thanks kids, dad really loves it. Let's just, let's just dive in. That was me just being weird. Let's do this. It's aesthetically pleasing that you're wearing a rush shirt right now. I appreciate you for it. Get her done, as Dan Avedon would say with Brian Wecht, or Brian Wrecked. Am I right, family? Dude, hell yeah! Oh! Oh, it's got that prog rocky sound. It, ooh. Too. Damn, I love Danny's voice. Search time in all realities to champions of what I need. Hey Ninja Brian, is that a mystic space portal behind you? Oh shit! <laughs> Oh damn, we have musically transported with the story. Ah! Brian. <laughs> oh, God. TWRP did this with them, right? God damn it. <laughs> Colored gemstones lit up the wall. They're the necromancer grand. Ooh, this is giving me chills. Damn. Only light can stop dark. I knew what I just spoke of. There you go. Oh, he's gonna fuck him. Stand back, Brian. I'm going to hug him. Oh, that works too. Woo! Dude, fuck yeah. Y'all have our battles to fight and a crystal cage to break through. Fuck yeah. We will be there to help you rock the uh -oh. fuck on. <laughs> Oh, I'm okay with 
okay. Sorry, that ending sentiment was very sweet. Kind of caught me off guard. We said fuck a lot there. It just ended on a very lovely note. That was so cool. Holy crap, I really liked that. That was fucking awesome. I only know because I saw it ahead of time that it's like 12 minutes long. That didn't feel like 12 minutes. That was incredible. Like that was like everything you'd want like a D&D &D campaign to be like, like the best asshole-ish people, but it still had like a lot of heart to it. They have this amazing ability to build a fantasy world and just kind of plop you in the middle of it. And it's just enough key phrases to where you're like, yeah, okay, I got it, let's go. Like they give you all the information you need up front, but it's delivered so casually that it's just, like it just stacks and stacks and stacks, but it stays so palatable. Like I, I, I completely understood the story. The necromancer came, turned the king's daughter, the princess into a crystal and off they went. The king summoned with the help of his wizard ninja sex party and they came through 26 dimensions to save her. Brian shot light arrows at him. They went back, healed him at the end. And Brian has an erectile dysfunction, so, you yeah. know. Crap, I really liked that. Like, it's just, they just have this reckless abandon and just carefree adventure, but only in the subject material, like, and the, and the delivery of their humor, but in the execution of it, it's so, like, meticulously thought out expertly done. You can feel this is a group of people that not only love music and each other, but also 70s proggy, 80s synthy sound, just combining it into this like ridiculous mythos of a world, but then using it, using then their talents to tell the story. And I love how you have the world of the kings in this Middle Earth Asgard realm of the fathers and brothers Westeros of the king and then you have ninja sex party and I love how it just gets inserted into everything they they still keep true to their characters but so do the fantasy elements too stay true and I love holding that integrity to the world they've built but the characters they've established in the last 10 years damn just listening to it like you could feel each shift in the narrative like when we changed locations you could hear it in the music when we went from like exposition to introduction to exploration to a conflict and a showdown you could feel the energy shifting with the music I love that they played with a lot of those different grandiose mute like almost like rock opera-esque like musical narratives from like the 70s like I love how they played with a lot of those finer smaller pieces the intricacies of that style and genre of music like they say when you don't know what to write write what you know this is write what you know and it was just the right amount of everything where it's you know oh mount nasty but then also the princess and the king like it was just the right amount of back and forth between nsp language and the eyes of my father the 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 face of my brother the 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 realms the kings the gods of old and i love how it combined in that way where it still it, it kept this feeling of like ridiculous comedy but also structured in this fantasy world and it never once compromised the narrative it was never so much where it's like Ugh, balls it's just enough to keep it them but it never once compromises this world that they've built through the story and the song. You can feel little things that they've learned through smaller versions of this joke in other songs that they've done, like uh, Attitude City with the lute or uh, Courtship of the Mermaid, where it's like little pieces of like that medieval Bardian kind of sound and like kind of playing with that humor. What they've learned from making that type of comedy, but also making that type of music, then came in here where it was a lot of atmosphere, a lot of flavors, where it kept me in that medieval times feeling, which I absolutely loved. The right cheese with the right bread and the right meat. It's this sampling of different flavors where it's just the right amount of complimentary, where something ridiculous and explosive would happen, Ninja Brian gets an erectile dysfunction, Danny's arms breaking, uh, Mount Nasty is still my favorite thing. They ran straight away for they did not give a shit, for they, for they gave not a shit. Like just the right amount of that to pair with everything to where it still held everything together in, in, in a cohesive way, which I really, I really enjoyed. And I, that's what I love about their, their work is that it, it concludes, you know, like it's it's never once like, oh, and then 
uh, poop bombs rain from the sky, or balls Hitler just showed up. It, it never goes that far, and whenever they go far with their comedy, it still comes around full circle, and they see it through. They don't just leave you with a weird thought and then just peace out. And it shows here, too, like, such a strong passion project like this. Like, you could, you could feel it. Like, you could feel the story, like, more to the story, and, like, all of it was justified. It wasn't broken up into multiple parts where, oh, they saved the princess, and then they had to go remake the ultimate sandwich. This story needed to be told all the way through, and it wanted to be told. And the time they take to set up a description of in a location or a person or the world, so that way then they could drop a, a little cherry joke on top of it. It was perfectly done. I, I can't wait for the finished project for this song, because I feel like there's so much here that they could do. But I love the song itself. Like, it's, it's very grand. One moment does not outweigh the other. Everything complements each other very nicely. It didn't, it didn't peak at the fight with the necromancer. It didn't lull when they're traveling or when they're explaining, uh, like Danny breaking his arms, coming back to the castle. It, it stayed like that intensity, that, that captivating feeling stayed in their story throughout. And I, I absolutely applaud that because that's that's hard to do, especially for 12 minutes. And I, damn, I really like that. And I love the ending too. When they're saying goodbye, the journey's at end, Ninja Brian killed somebody. We all have our battles to fight and a crystal cage to break through in our lives. But when hope is gone, we will be there to help you rock the fuck on. I, fuck, I just love that sentiment at the end because it really breaks down what this story is, which is someone needed help and called out to Ninja Sex Party. That message here and at the end there where we're all going to have times in our lives where we need help and to not hes hesitate to ask people for it. It's not defined by one thing. Everyone has their own battles. And I just, I love that after having this grand and fun, extravagant, like huge monster of a song and a piece and an adventure and a story to tell, still taking that time at the end to give kindness and love and a lesson to those who listen. That really means a lot to me. It blows my mind how the more fantastic their stories get, their humor stays the same, but like the heart grows in their songs. Like it reminds me of, uh, I know it's a TWRP song, but Starlight Brigade, huge, amazing, like anime style sci-fi battles, you know, out in space, you know, lasers and robots and go and believe in yourself. But that's just it, is it had the heart in it of believing in your dreams, like answering that call to, to what in life pulls you. Like the more fantastic they get, the more heart and spirit shows in their work. It's so cool and I appreciate and admire that so much that like when they go so balls to the wall with their subject material, the heart of that song, of that piece grows grew three times that day. Because the holidays, you gotta tie that in. But I really liked that. I thought that was incredible. I'm really excited for them to drop uh, more music and for the video. It's a bummer that there's no video yet, but hopefully there will be one day. Um, again, I have the link here and then down in the description below if you guys want to purchase one of the super fan pins of Ninja Sex Parties. Uh, to contribute. This is in no way sponsored. Uh, they, I, No one asked me to make this video. I just want to make this video. There you guys go. That's what I thought of The Mystic Crystal by Ninja Sex Party. What did you guys think? Are there other Ninja Sex Party songs you want me to talk about? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much to everybody who's been watching. Every click, every, every like, every sub, every view. I appreciate each and every one of you. I will see you tomorrow with more thanks standing goodness for the Thanksgiving weekend. And if you're seeing this in the future, I will see you on Tuesday with more standing goodness. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Take care of yourselves, please, and rock the fuck on. No.